This initiative was a recommendation for independent review of forest practices uh, and uh, primarily was to create a market for low-grade wood that otherwise wouldn't find a market or a home. There's always a stigma behind the biomass industry. Um, people view it as um, inefficient systems and clear cutting to provide the fuel. That's just simply not the case. So from a woodlot owner's perspective, what they're able to do is sell us low quality stuff that other producers typically wouldn't take. So if a typical producer would go in to say collect stud wood, they would leave all the low grade residuals, treetops, standing dead or anything that's a little bit off center, where something we will actually come in and pay the woodlot owner to take that stuff because we do see a value in that, whereas otherwise it would be left to rot in the woods. Unfortunate environmental side effect of that is whenever you leave wood to rot, it will still emit all of its greenhouse gases. So if you take it back to a system like ourselves, where we can actually scrub a lot of those greenhouse gases out of the wood itself, whereas otherwise it would still be emitted. When we go onto a wood lot, there might be 20 to 40 percent of that wood lot that is made up of uh, unmarketable wood, insect damaged wood. So now with the wood heating system, we can use all of that material to develop wood chips to offset the use of fossil fuels with a renewable. For us it was a no-brainer and it's successfully implemented in many uh, countries and jurisdictions, internationally in Austria and in Germany, Scandinavia and uh, New England. Even in, in Canada, Prince Edward Island implemented successfully as well, dozens of public buildings. We had already um, done a substantial amount of work in this industry in PEI. The next obvious outlet was in Nova Scotia. The overall pilot project was, was a fantastic idea. A large percentage of the, of the provincially owned buildings are consuming oil. So an oil consuming building is an easy switch over to a wood chip seating system. We were able to implement this initiative in six sites across the province, nine facilities. Among these nine facilities, two district heat systems. On site of Perenia here, we have a single boiler house feeding three customer buildings. So these are all fed from a single point, a single boiler house. We recently completed a wood chip heating facility here at Memorial High School. The objective of this project was to replace the oil consumption of this building with uh, carbon neutral wood chip fuel. Not overly complex, so um, your typical oil consuming or propane consuming building um, is already a hydronic or a water system. So essentially all we're doing is trading one for one. We're creating that energy and that hot water via wood versus being done by oil or propane. It's not overly intrusive. We're essentially just adding a small piece of equipment inside their existing boiler room and heating up their return water coming back from the buildings. So this is the offloading system. Our tractor trailer backs into this hopper. There's an auger that augers the chips into the storage area and fills automatically. So the equipment itself is what's called a gasification boiler. What's different from a normal wood burning application to a gasification boiler is a normal wood burning application just fires the wood and collects the energy around it. A gasification boiler actually extracts the gas out of the wood, your harmful gases like your CO, your nitrous oxide, your methane, and actually refire those gases to create a high efficiency. So the systems that are implemented here have a combustion efficiency between 92 and 95 percent versus a typical wood burning application which is around 30. The majority of the, the, the emissions you see coming from the boiler is actually just water vapor. Just from the, the excess water that's taken out of the wood has to be exhausted somewhere so it's exhausted in, in, in the way of vapor. So this is inside our uh, boiler room. We have chips that feed into it and then drops down into the stoker and then again augered into the, uh, the burn chamber. So once the boiler senses that it's starting to climb and reach its desired temperature, it will actually slow down a little bit so that we, we meet that temperature and we do not exceed it. If the building calls for heat, our pump will speed up and instantaneously deliver the energy right to their front door. We are inside Memorial's boiler room where we brought our pipes in. We are pulling their water out of their system. It goes through the heat exchanger, gets heated up with our water, and then back into their system. Mm -hmm. 
Essentially what we're doing is we are preheating their water so that the boiler senses that it's already up to temperature so that it doesn't need to fire on the oil boilers. We have been able to uh, completely heat the school and maintain it, its demand with wood chips. From a waste point of view, um, about every 90 minutes the boiler will actually go into what's called a low burn. It'll bring its fire down to about half mass and it'll completely self-clean the entire boiler and bring all the ashes to the front and, and actually into storage bins. When those bins reach a certain level, they will then auger the ash up and out and into a, uh, a ash bin outside. I mean, PEI, we actually drop it off to farmers um, as a uh, lime replacement. It's a fertilizer. It's a high-grade fertilizer. So previously, this school did consume between 240 and 270,000 liters a year. Currently, we are displacing all of that oil consumption with wood chips. For uh, any operator, you can predict your budget 20 years from now, and you know where it's coming from. Forest here, forest there. So the contrast is fuel based on international pricing drastically can, can change. Plus, 80 cents on a dollar stays in the province when we buy feedstock locally. But 80 cents on a dollar go offshore when we import fuel for heating. The doing of wood chips would keep all the revenue in the province of Nova Scotia. So this would create a lot more opportunity for jobs in the forest industry and keep the value here. So it has to be from an environmental standpoint and also an economic standpoint. Because the, the, the two have to coincide. If you have something that's environmental but costs you 10 times as much, it just, it cannot be easily as implemented. You have renewable versus fossil fuel. You have local versus imported. And you keep, you keep doing these comparisons and the case from various angles just made itself very strong and very clear.